whenever you're ready. Oh my God. <laughs> Jessica. I've never been called a fox. <laughs> Dana. That's a classy name for a Harry. I like it classic. Okay. Do you? <laughs> Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. Sure. Out with the bad and in with the good, motherfuckers. That's right. Jessica. Dana. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Welcome to the Rants and Raves podcast. I'm Dana Powell. I'm Jessica Young. And, and we, we are, are here, here to, to rant and rave. rave. Okay, I just want to say that there I, I don't know if it was last week or the week before. You know, sometimes I try I sometimes I can't listen to us because I just get sick of my own voice. <laughs> and then other times I'm just in the mood to hear you. Like it makes me feel like I'm hanging out with you, so I'll listen. And the other day I was listening and we did that and I was like, "Nailed it." With like thought we were so, we could not have been more off. And I was like, uh, yes. And we even got shoulders in there. Yes. Like we were rock stars. First of all, our song is not a rock song, Dana. It is it's more very of a boogie woogie bugle boy from is, Pompano Beach. Let's be honest, is very lame. <laughs> <laughs> not only is it lame, we just can't get it together when we're not in the same room. No, it's not possible. It's just hard. <laughs> How are you, Jessica? I am good, Dana. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How was your week? Excellent. You know what? It was pretty good so far. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I went back down to San Diego, which is always a nice um, little uh, retreat away from the big city lights of LA. San Diego is a big city, too. But it's, it's so beautiful. Very different from LA. It's so beautiful very. down there. Yeah. Also, and I love that you're like, I went for a retreat. You went for work. <laughs> I went for work and I was gone for less than 24 hours. <laughs> but do you know That's what I got bad. to do? What? I don't know. You'll probably roll your eyes and be like, no, thank you. But I got to feast on my favorite of any, you know, I hate chain restaurants and I mean, yeah. hate them. I There is one them. exception. There is <laughs> one exception to this. What? Benny Hanna. Uh, Jessica, you're going to die. You hate it or you love it? I have never been to a Benny Hanna. <sighs> Your I face. Actually, I actually <laughs> think you would love it. And I know you're going to be like, no, you could have chicken. Their chicken is out of sight on the hibachi grill, fried rice. I mean, just those two things alone, I think you would be very content with. No? I think so, yes. But I'm trying not to eat meat. It would have to be I meat. Know. Well, they meat. have a veggie version. You could have fried oh. rice and veggies oh but really i don't think you love onions no bean sprouts and zucchini no, no. zucchini <laughs> I, I can zucchini i can tolerate especially if it's in a bread <laughs> will you eat <laughs> will you eat tofu i have eaten tofu it's got to be with something really well seasoned and yummy you the need like a mapo tofu or something that's like drenched in sauce which is something delicious. that gives it flavor enough that i can ignore the texture right <laughs> you're like this is just teriyaki balls or whatever correct, correct. <laughs> i have real texture issues well dana huh. let me tell you because i'm not kidding this has now happened twice this year and i've been ecstatic i got upgraded to a suite and i mean like a top floor suite and again Ooh. it's great but also i'm like of course that happens when i'm alone it's not I like know. i had time to invite a friend to come or alan or whatever hmm. nobody could go with me so hmm. i go up i have a huge i just real quick i don't want to yes. sidetrack you but you didn't invite me go ahead <laughs> <laughs> ah! i could have brought you and henry to be quite honest there was plenty of room <laughs> so a huge like kitchen bar area then this huge living room with a full giant sectional sofa, wow. a TV bigger than I've ever owned in my lifetime, a huge TV. And then that closes off. That whole area has its own air conditioning. I'm already in heaven. The bedroom had two queen size beds. They were like made up to the nines, like the sheets and everything were perfection. So comfortable. Everything was a dream. So I Ooh. ordered Benny Hanna to go. Yes. And I sat and ate my feast of Benihana while I watched four hours of Shark 
Shut up. That sounds like heaven to me. Yes, it was. Jessica, do to everybody that be living it up. Yeah, what? <laughs> Jessica, do. Come on. That sounds like heaven. You needed more than 24 hours. I'm telling you, it really, really was. Aww, the little that. things. Mm, so, right? Yeah. That's Especially what I did right in the beautiful now. city. I decided to pig out on hibachi cooking and sharks flying through the air and how high they breached the surface. I support that. I support that. What's a shark sound like? You said you pigged out. Let's see. <laughs> Rawr. Is that a shark? <laughs> I support that 100%. All of it. Hilarious. I love it. was it. great. Hey, Shark Week. Well, by the time this is out, y'all won't, you'll, you'll have missed is Shark, Shark Week. Shark Week right now? Today. Oh, yeah. I got to get Henry on that too. Uh, Henry needs it. to see Air Jaws because that's when they have decoys of seals that <gasps> a boat is pulling. And then the great whites come up and they're measuring how high the breach is. So the record breaker, I think, jumped. 17 feet out of the Shut air. Shut up. It was insane. And by the way, this is so fascinating to me. The locals in the areas that are known for high concentrations of great whites know they're like, oh my God, that's Fred. Because so Fred him. is like a 15 foot, 4,000 pound. Shut up. Great white. So like the locals in South Africa knew specific sharks. Same in Australia. They're like, oh yeah, that's, that's Nettie. That's Slash. Excuse oh me. God. One of them was called Slash. Amazing. Dana. It was because he got caught by a fishing line. No. He looked like Heath Ledger's Joker. No. He was ripped from here to there. It didn't stop Slash. It didn't stop Slash. Uh-uh. Not even kind of. 17 feet in the air. That's like the... That's like the height of a building. Can you imagine yeah. you could be on a roof and that thing could eat you? I'm telling you, <laughs> you will, your eyes will pop out if you see how high these great whites. And I believe that they know specifically who they are too, for those reasons, like characteristics. Yes. And traits. You know, I had a mama bird and babies mm -hmm. for the last couple of months and yeah. the babies, I lost two babies, but one baby mm -hmm. flew away, but the mama keeps coming back for worms because I started feeding her worms to help. I her love that they remember and know that she came back yesterday. I go out. This is not a joke. You guys are going to think I'm lying, but it's the truth. I go outside and I go, mama, mama. And she comes and Come she, per on. she perches on the tick, the tiki torch I have out there. And she watches me put worms down for her and she gathers them up and takes them off. But I recognize her. That's chirp. heartwarming. Yes. The reason I knew she was still coming back is because I heard her. Mm -hmm. And I ran out like the crazy woman I am because I'm Dana. And I went, Mama, Mama, <laughs> Mama. And she Mama, came, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> and she flew onto the tiki torch. And I was like, it is her. <laughs> First of all, the fact that I just pictured you in a rendition of Yentl is going to give me life for the next month, okay? I'm not kidding. I'm sure my neighbors are like, Dana's out there calling to birds again. Oh, that's amazing. Mama! Mama! <laughs> this oh is God. perfect. But Henry will love it because I've told you guys before. <laughs> he just loves like I can't handle hunting like mm -hmm. a cougar hunting an antelope or whatever it is. Those are probably not even in the same continent. But anyway, <laughs> I can't take it. I it just makes me cry. And he yep. is like he used to laugh at it when he was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. We're going to have to look up some Shark Week stuff. Yes. Also, it's funny because Nat Geo, I think, is trying to get on that shark tip because last night I'm like, oh, I, wait a minute. Shark Week's on Discovery. But Nat Geo has been running shark programming, I think, to try to oh, sidle compete. up to their... Uh, compete with Shark Week? They're uh -huh. siphoning off some shark content uh, huh, huh, huh. interesting yep well i'll gobble it up i'll take it all it's i think sharks are fascinating i would never get in a shark cage their eyes are deep in soulless sharks are fascinating they have yes. those they're so huge first of all they're so powerful they keep losing teeth and growing them back i don't know what kind of magic that is so guess <laughs> what i learned last night when they lose them they, if they're loose or whatever, and I don't know how this is possible, they could do it. They purposefully swallow them 
for the so calcium. So they absorb the, yes. That's pretty amazing. You know, Murphy, my little gecko, she eats her mm-hmm. own skin when she peels because she needs really? the nutrients from it. Anyway, moving on from grossness. <laughs> Um, oh my god so i didn't have anything exciting i don't think happened this week that i need to share i feel like every day is friday because (laughs) henry's out of school Mm -hmm. so every day i wake up i'm like oh it's friday but that doesn't make sense because he has school on fridays i don't know what's (laughs) wrong with me So, as you can tell, I have nothing to share. He's Let's on summer ahead. vacation. Yeah. Well, you had a fun time. You took him swimming this week. I'm sure he was in heaven. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had fun. We did some racing. We both have snorkels. We did a little racing. I love it. Yeah, it was fun. I'll tell you what, that snorkel is pretty amazing. Our I girlfriend... was amazed when I saw a picture of it. Well, our girlfriend, Kristen Marie, has that rooftop pool. Uh-huh. And nobody's ever there. I think we're the only ones that have ever gone up there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I put that snorkel on and I did laps around that pool. And because you don't have to get up and breathe, right? Because right. then I swallow water and I get it in my nose. And I'm like, I'm not doing this. This is a choice I can say no to. So <laughs> uh, you don't have to do that. And so I just did right? laps. And I'm telling you, it was a nice. real good workout. Yes. Swimming is great exercise. I love swimming. I always have. Yeah, me too. Okay, fine. We'll just go to this really quick. I feel it would be prudent. I think the episode right before this, uh, we discussed my plight of me not wanting to go um, in the pool because I refused to wear a bathing suit. Haven't had one on in almost 20 years Mm -hmm. after a traumatizing experience on TV where I had to wear a bathing suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never should have happened to you the way you were treated. It's fine. Okay. It's not fine, but we've moved on. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. Yes. So since then, I've never put a bathing suit on again, ever, ever, ever. Not for anyone, not even for myself. Okay. So I have to tell you, because I was having breakfast with a friend this morning and I told her, I'm like, she goes, I, you're inspiring me. I said, well, I need you to know I'm inspired because of what Dana said to me. If you guys heard on the episode, I believe um, Dana said this while we were on air that uh, not to deprive myself mm-hmm. of having these fun times. And I love swimming and I wanted to, I want to swim in general, but why not have fun with my friends or with my nieces and nephews when we're about yes. to be on vacation, Making all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So before my Benny Hanna feast, yes, I made sure to do it before then. So I wasn't all bloated and filled yes, with sodium. Yes. <laughs> I went and my hotel is across the street from, a target that is like walking into a Nordstrom. It's the best target you've ever seen. I don't know what it is with San Diego and their targets. They're a hundred times better than the LA targets. Well, because San Diego is a pretty wealthy community. (laughs) It's crazy. Okay. The, the swimsuit section alone was so giant and ladies, the plus size swimsuit section was giant you're lucky if you find one crappy suit on the rack one left because they usually have one style they maybe get in 10 and every person is ripped it off the rack that's of a larger size and then you have no other options yeah or you can go to like a plus size store like lane bryant and pay 150 dollars for something you only kind of like Okay, now let me tell you something. I tried there too. They didn't have shit, at least at the location I went to. But also, I'm like, we're in California. You can swim year round. This is not like October when I was growing up. And if you didn't get a swimsuit by late spring, you were out of luck because they weren't getting them back till the next year. The places should be stocked year round in Florida, in California, and Arizona, places where people can still swim. Mm -hmm. So. My point is to all of my ladies of a larger size and to anyone, I can't believe I'm even saying that. Shame on me. I'm just trying to be real here, people. I have a bad way with words sometimes and getting my <laughs> No, you out. don't. Please. I was so thankful. And I told Dana that. I said, I can't believe that I'm sending you pictures. She, yes, but if I can't send a picture me- to a friend, then how am I going to go in public? Swim in front of friends. And you sent me, what was it, four different suits? Yes. Of and me they, in the suits. Yes, That's the correct. key. Me wearing them and I, in the full-length mirror of my hotel bathroom. And I told <laughs> Jessica, 
who am I talking to? I'm talking to you. I don't know <laughs> why I'm like, you guys. Um, but I told you, and this is so true. I am so sensitive about that kind of mm-hmm. stuff because I have been uh, up and down weight wise my entire yes. life. And it hasn't mattered what size I was at. I hated myself. Correct. And I told you, I am so sensitive about that. I would let you know if I thought, Jessica, you don't want to be around our friends in that. Yes. <laughs> I really would out of yes. love. Out of love, I would do that because I would want the same from you. And I am telling you, I'm not even joking. Every single one of those suits, you looked so freaking adorable in. You're so sweet. So much so that when I did my, my, when I was talking to Dan at the end of the night, I was like, oh my God, Jessica got these. I'm obsessed. I'm about, and was telling him all about your swimsuits, (laughs) telling my husband about your swimsuits. I don't, (laughs) but that's how excited I was for you. That's so sweet. You looked like, seriously cute in the swimsuits you're very kind well again they had an amazing selection y'all i'm telling you if you are like me and i know i'm not the only one nor is dana also even when i have been literally 80 pounds lighter than i am now i felt that's when i did the thing on tv and i was brought in to be a fatty i hate to say that but i was okay i was brought into that same show to be a fatty (laughs) and i just had to eat cheesecake and i'm grateful I mean, well, I was even, I was talking about this this morning with a friend and I remember that we had friends, male friends yes. of ours who said, oh, don't, they asked me, what is this? And I told them and they didn't even know the gist of it, but they knew enough to where I'll never forget them. They were trying to protect Rescue me. They're like, you. please don't do this. It's not yeah. going to be good. You don't need to do this. And I'm like, yes, I do. And I was young. And I'm, I remember also I was mortified because I'm like, I can't do this. I need to be in a bathing suit. And I remember one of my dear friends said, so you think Chris Farley gave a shit? I bet he goes, or Will Farrell, who's half Chris Farley's size. He doesn't have some great body. He goes, you think they care when they're doing their silly wacky stuff and i'm like i know what you're saying and i hate making a double standard but at the end of the day they're men it is true okay and also i'm telling you i know those guys you did it with i was on a team we were called big it was five giant men and me yes and i know for a fact that that damaged some of them too that Mm -hmm. specific that you worked with in that scene i know for a fact i witnessed it it. yeah and it stayed with them for probably still it, absolutely it was, it was painful and you know jessica i don't know if i've ever told you this or not i was asked to do the same scene you were oh you were yes and i flat out said no well you're smart but again i was young i certainly wasn't naive but i was at that point of desperation where work i'm like first of all an opportunity I got so excited because, you know, as the way it was brought to me was, oh, you were recommended by so-and-so and and -and so-and-so. Well, these are people that I looked up to as a young improviser and performer. They were already known names in the comedy world. And I just lit up. And of course, the first thing I thought was, oh my God, they've seen me perform. They thought I was funny. That's what, where my mind went. It's like, how, why else would they recommend me? I didn't think they even knew who I was. Right. And then I had the reality set in when a friend was like, oh, honey, no, yeah. no, no, no. I, I I, have a feeling I know what this is about. Please don't do it and whatever. Now I did it. And I think you and I have concurred about this. That, bless his heart, wherever you are, and I don't remember your name, we had a more than fabulous man for hair and makeup. He and he made me was, feel like a million bucks. Yes, he did. And he made God bless that me, man. Seriously. He made me too. I was, he, we were outside. <laughs> um, We were on location and uh-huh. he had to do my makeup outside. So he had me on a little stool with his mm-hmm. mirrors and stuff doing mm-hmm. the best he could. And I stopped him and I go, you are so wonderful, but I don't think I'm supposed to be pretty. And you're making me look really pretty. Yep. He goes, you are pretty. I'm not making anything. Yes. You be quiet. You let me do my job. Yeah. You are gorgeous. He yep. was so kind. I love him. Yeah. He's the only reason I didn't have a mental breakdown right there. Even 100%. though I agreed to do it. I agreed to do it. And at the time, Jessica, I was in a food eating program and I couldn't, I had lost mm-hmm. 63 pounds and I couldn't eat sugar. So I yep. had to chew that cheesecake and for the shot and spit it out in a trash can. Yep. That was real hard. 
This is also because I remember that and I remember what you looked like at that time too. This, you guys, just to show you the psychology and how mean we and society are to ourselves and to each mm -hmm. other as far as aesthetics and looks. This is when we were uh, looked completely different than we do at other times in our life. Mm -hmm. And we still didn't feel great about ourselves. No. But guess what? The perception was still of something else to others. And I remember that being crushing. It's not because I thought, what? I'm so thin. Why would they? But I had lost 80 pounds. I was yeah. starting to feel better yeah. about myself. And then it's like, oh, we want you to be morbidly obese in this uh -huh. promo. Got, and I'm like, what? I got that call for that job while I was in Trader Joe's buying vegetables and feeling proud of myself. Okay. I mean, I was like, and I had to um, go to my car and sit down before I could finish my shopping. Yep. <clears throat> So, but I was young too. And these people were big in that world. And it was like, if I can just get in, yes. but I don't do things like that anymore. You no. know, if it's because I don't want to send the message. Um, first of all, fat's not funny. Right. We're, we're in a different time. Yep. Right. And, um, but also I don't ever want to communicate to someone who looks like me because I look like the average woman in the United States Yes, that they are less than or not Correct. worthy of, or yep. unattractive, I do not want to send that message ever. And Absolutely. I, have, I have turned down many a thing because of that. My reps know yep. that I have boundaries with that. But good for you for doing that, seriously. Well, maybe that's why I don't work as much as I would like to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but worth it. Yes. Yeah. Because how many years ago was that? And it still damages us. And we remember every bit of it. It's a long time ago. A long and time ago. I'll tell you, I'm not joking for whatever it would be worth. But I know some people appreciate it. And I know people have reached out to me sometimes decades later to tell me something uh -huh. that I either A, forgot and I remember everything. Or I had no idea was an impact on them. Right. If I knew that man's name and how to, re I would literally I say, I just want you to know for what it's worth. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years or whatever. Like, yeah. It's you... got to be nearing 20 years. It's got to be at yes. least 15. Yes. Right. Yeah. I would yeah, say, I, I just want you to know the him. impact that you had and how you made me feel. And that literally kept me from fully, like you said, like totally having a breakdown. I mean, he totally. really. And he meant it. Yes. You could tell. I will never forget his face. Yep. Never. He and he adorable. did. In fact, one of our friends reached out to me. I never watched it. To this day, I've never seen it. Yeah. And one of our friends reached out to me because I'm sure she she was a writer on the show. And I'm sure she knew that was hard for me. And she said, I just want to let you know I saw your segment and you looked like an angel. Mm -hmm. And it's because of him. Yep. It was because it's of nuts. him. Yeah. Please. Uh, have fun, you guys. That is the Don't moral another, of the story. That's right. Don't For miss real. another summer. Don't miss Do another. not do it. Mm -mm. Because I, I'm doing now, it, y'all. I mean, we, in a week, I'm going to be in a suit for the first time in a really long time. And, and you look so cute. <laughs> thank you. Are. you. I'm going to have fun. I saw the pictures. And you're I'm gonna going to have fun. To have fun. And here's the thing, you are going to feel good and be able to have fun because you already know that you're comfortable, yeah. that you got something you're comfortable in. I'm not saying go out and buy yourself a bikini if that's not what you're into, because right. God knows I would rather swim in a vat of acid before <laughs> I do that. <laughs> totally. I have, mine but, has a little mini, like it looks like a little tennis skirt. <laughs> yes, so does mine. And mine uh -huh. has sleeves because that's an issue I have. Trust and, me, I looked. They didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. And it Thank makes you. me, I can swim and be in the moment mm -hmm. and not be going, oh, is this my fat? Am I laying my arm wrong on my body? It's fat. Mm -hmm. You know? Totally. And that's worth everything. <laughs> All right. Well, we've just chatted for two hours as if it were a green room dump. <laughs> Should but we seriously, get on it I'm not it? kidding. Yes. I just have to make that clear. Listen to your friends and people that you know and that you're close with and that you know won't lie to you. And honestly, Dana, if you hadn't said that, like it just kept, and it wasn't even because you were like, eh, meh, meh. you're never I like hope that. Not. I hope I not. I don't know why I just said that. Like some old <laughs> nag from a cartoon. No, but it does. I mean, some people do nag. Like in my lifetime, yes. I've had people who were me going, don't do that. That's dumb. You're robbing right. yourself. And their words just fell on deaf yes. ears because, because of the delivery. I think like, I was like, you don't get it. 
<laughs> it just sat with me. I'm serious. And I kept thinking about it and I'm like, she's right. Like, I don't know if it was the timing, what the way you said it, whatever it was, a combination of all of it, it sat with me for like 24 hours. And the way down there, I was like, there's a target across the street. I'm going to go in there and just take a peek. I'm glad you did because I fully intended when you got back before you left for your mm-hmm. vacation to drag you by <laughs> your hair if I had to, to find something that you loved. It's hilarious. I'm so well, glad. Thank you. Of course. Cheers. Mm-hmm. She has water. I have a monster. Yay. <laughs> so happy for you. You're going to have a ball. Thank you. I hope yeah. so. I think I'm up first for rants. And yes. This is an actual rant from me that I submitted. Like, I didn't just start talking about it on the show and go, oh, God, I talked too long. That's my rant. This <laughs> I I sent to you, Jessica, because mm-hmm. it is unacceptable and it needs to be talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to read what the description is and then we can spin off and talk about it. Here we go. There was a lady who sneezed in a gas station Burger King without covering anything. In fact, she hid her purse behind her back to save it from her own spit. What? I also would like to discuss how we were taught wrong. Do not cover your sneeze or your cough with your hand because that's what we were taught, Mm -hmm. right? At least I was. Our kids learn now to cover with your elbow. Yes. You, so. I, and if I don't see people doing that now, I do call them out for it. And I'm talking about adults. Uh, it's mostly adults because we were trained, cover your hand, cover your mouth with your hand. Mm-hmm. And you touch everything with your spit hand. Don't you dare. Yep. You put it in your elbow. So when you shower, your germs can go away. Uh-huh. But also, lady, there is food in this area and you yes. were so concerned about your purse getting wet but you didn't think to cover your mouth and it wasn't just a like keep your mouth closed <clears throat> kind of sneeze it wasn't that mm-hmm. it was this <laughs> it was <laughs> a, a nasty juicy it was a hurricane of stranger <laughs> spit that i saw in the air raining down and floating everywhere at the Burger King. Unacceptable. There's French fries sitting there, lady. Yes. Do you know? Okay, so I used to work at an all-you-can-eat salad bar place. Let us surprise you. Um, Stop it. Wait, what? What's the name? <laughs> Lettuce, L-E-T-T-U-C-E, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. soup, S-O-U-P, rise, U. It was the precursor to soup plantation. No, ma'am. I'm which is out of business and unacceptably named. Yeah. Let us surprise you was the all you can eat soup, salads, and muffins. I mean, and it sounds that, like my kind of yum. Oh, it was amazing. It was like $7.95. Can you imagine? Come on. And for real, everything was brought in daily, chopped fresh. All of the salads within the salad bar were made fresh. Mm-hmm. The muffins were baked daily and the mm-hmm. soups. Like it was not. I was in, you know, like most companies are pretty decent when they start and they're being, then once they get huge and expand, it's all made in one place and then it's all shipped out frozen across the country and filled with all kinds of shit. Anyway, what is my point? Oh, yes. The plexi that -hmm. comes down, that is called a sneeze guard. Yeah. It's literally called a sneeze guard. It makes me want Mm -hmm. to throw up thinking Mm -hmm. about it for that very reason. How dare you? Also... We have a mutual friend. I won't shame them fully. Um, But if you're listening, which I know you are, you know it's you. They don't cover their mouth, but they do this. They put their. Uh huh. They put their fingers like to the corner. It's like, I don't know who you think you're fooling. And they go, chew. So I'm like, you haven't covered your mouth. Now Uh -uh. it's just shooting the other way. You gave it a track to follow. Yes. They put it up like a partial wall. No, but it's just a guide for the spit. Yes, it makes me livid, and I call them out for it every freaking time they sneeze. Every time I get Unacceptable. Pissed. I don't want your spit all over my air I'm breathing. No. And it's especially disgusting. now, even I know I've been annoying the shit out of Alan with it. 
because I've never been like a freak or a germaphobe or whatever. But he's like, God damn it. He gets pissed. He's like, you're always on me about this, that, whatever. And I'm like, you know what, pal? Now that we've been through COVID, I ain't ever going to back down on this. No, no. That's the thing that made me so mad about this woman. I was like, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And Mm -hmm. guess what? It's winding up again. Yep. My home state is the worst. I mean, I don't know. It's really crazy. We've talked about bringing this up. I don't know if we want to. We won't do it right now. But like Jessica and I both know people who are fully vaccinated with COVID at the very moment. Yes. Y'all need to be careful. I know we don't like wearing masks. You think I like it? It gives me mask me. No, Uh I don't. But I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for my child. I'm doing it for my dad. I'm doing it for anyone else out there to protect you from me and me from you. It's a kindness. Knock it off and let's get through this until we can find I feel like this is going to be like the flu. We're going to, it's here forever. We're going to have to get shots every year just like a flu shot. But if you don't straighten up and get your vaccination and wear your dang masks, we're going to lose 500,000 more people. Yes. And I don't know how you can think that that's inflated numbers when there were semi trucks carrying bodies out of hospitals. Okay. My hometown right now, they have a place called the Tower. It is a COVID hospital wing that is several. Like, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. This isn't a joke. No. There's people that so still are acting like it's nothing. And it's... it's still so respectful for you to be so flippant when people have lost people they love yep. anyway we'll probably talk about that a little bit more another time but i put that in my stories i yes. almost said bad word because it really upsets me i just <laughs> want to get agree. back to life i just right. want to get back to life and you know jessica real quick uh henry and i were at a friend's rooftop mm-hmm. or Kristen's. we mm-hmm. were coming down to leave and the elevator stopped before the bottom thing now Uh, we're on the elevator all masked up whatever right right. this man gets on no mask now i get that he lives there and he should be able to do what he wants but you look at my son and you tell me you think he's old enough to be vaccinated Mm -hmm. no you wait for the next one or you put on a mask no he gets on i gave that man a death stare and i grabbed my (sighs) child and my like i pulled him over to me and i go Uh you get over here next to your mama honey and then i looked at that man and i went "Uh uh-uh Mm-hmm. Huh. It's so rude. And guess what? Yes, he lives there, but he lives in a building with others. That's not his private elevator. No. And, he and was nowadays, going down, he was going down to get his pizza. So he had to talk to that person, too. I I've know noticed. You. I don't know where you've been. I don't want nope. you around my can't be vaccinated child. Yep. I've noticed this whole time during COVID because I would be in hotels for work and I would see people get on or like I would be there and I would like I never was like where I would make a beeline for the elevator and the minute I'd get in I'd push the button frantically so it would close so nobody would get in with me I never did that before now if I'm doing that and people approach or if I walk up and they're already there I pretend like I'm looking at my phone or I say oh go ahead I'm waiting for someone I'm no, I, you know me, I got in an elevator once and then a guy walked in and he didn't have a mask on and I go, oh no, I'll wait. And I got off. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. And I said it out loud. You know me, I don't have much of a filter. I could never be a gambler because I have no <laughs> poker face and I have no poker speaking, I guess, because I just oh say whatever gosh. I think. Uh-uh, no, I'll wait. <laughs> yes. But why can't they? I'm like, why are people rushing to get in an elevator with me and other people they don't know? I'll never understand that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, yeah. Well, keep your sneeze to yourself. Please do. And especially in a restaurant area and a gas station where people are coming in and out from all. We were traveling. So it was like a truck stop kind of thing. And I was like, you're worried about your purse, but you couldn't (laughs) give a shit about me. Right. Thanks. And again, Thanks. even without COVID, it's just plain gross. And yes, that's how you get colds and stuff. It doesn't Absolutely. magically. 
appear. And also, I'm sorry, I, maybe I'm the only one, but I don't like stranger juices. I don't mm -hmm. want your spit. I don't want any juice or fluid that comes mm -hmm. from your body on or near me. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time with my own husband. But I mean, we have a baby, so I got <laughs> over it. But it's like, I don't want stranger juices, period. Yes. COVID or no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> oh, my heart. Oh, I got real wound up. Ah. I can feel it pounding. Woo, what's your oh rant, Jessica? God. I'm ready for my cleansing breath already. Well, you get ready. So oh, this no. is actually also um, dealing with cleanliness. Um, I'll be short and sweet with this because okay. this is pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. But this is regarding billing someone or anyone for a service that you did a horrible job with Ugh. okay yeah oh what am i talking about the carpet cleaners who came to my office so a company that i work for we are never going back to our office we learned that the productivity for us in mm -hmm. particular at our company really accelerated once we started working from home they never expected that to be the case wow. but it was you know it's it depends on the job right but our kind sure. of job really does it's pretty good if you can work your own hours within the parameters and have silence hopefully now of course it's hard for people that have kids it's sure. kind of impossible yeah but if you are someone that can have silence at home it's kind of ideal right I, of course, am a social butterfly, and I miss being at the office of because course. I like being around people. Water I know cooler talk is so fun. Totally. Yeah. Water cooler talk. Oh, my God. I loved it. So, anyways, we are never going back to the office. So, we were clearing out our office to get it ready to be shown, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for mm -hmm. somebody else to uh, lease the office space. So, we got everything out with the exception of, like, three desks and a couple of chairs just to kind of stage it mm -hmm. for the photographs for the realtor and stuff like that and so i went to let in someone to come in to steam our carpets we have like mm -hmm. industrial that really short pile carpet yeah yeah and part of why they had that because i'm like oh why did it was there ever carpet here it was like a sound barrier i understand oh, it does okay. help with sound right, right so there's a lot of talking in talking. our office yeah so the guy comes he was a half an hour late to start from me leaving to meet him, right? I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, not the end of the world. He comes in. I show him everything. He, I'm like, you're good? He goes, yeah, everything's fine. fine. I'm like, great. He goes, I'll text you or call you when I'm 20 minutes from being done. I said, perfect. I'll head over at that time to come right. meet you. Well, it's about that time where I'm supposed to be coming back and I haven't heard from him. So I text him and I say, hey, I was about to head back over. Are you all done? And he immediately calls me and he says, oh, oh, uh, can you give me 20 minutes? Can you give me 20 minutes? Uh, I'm trying to get my machine to work. I'm like, what? He hasn't even started? Well, he says it broke while he was doing it. I'm going to cut this, nip this in the bud. I'm like, can you just please level with me? Do you need a mach new machine or not? Oh, yeah, I guess that would be better. I said, then go get the machine and come back. Mm -hmm. because So I drive there, sit there waiting for him while he's getting a new machine. Mm -hmm. He comes back. I'm like, are you sure? Everything's fine? They, yes, yes, yes. I said, you're going to text me? Whatever. Yep. I come back. And I told him, I'm like, just go. When I was on the way there and I was around the corner and there's nothing in our office to steal, I'm like, just go right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so i walk in the place reeks of pee for starters pee? like pee like old stale pee did it okay? smell like that before no not at all old stale pee i then do not want to do this but i'm a freak I start touching the carpet. I go around the office and I'm pressing my hand into the carpet to see if I feel it even the slightest bit damp. Uh -huh. It's not. The only thing that was wet was the giant mat we have when you walk in. That's uh -huh. supposed to be like for people to wipe their, or, you know, Feed before on. you walk into the carpet. Right. Sopping wet. Sopping wet. And he poof, 
he left it draped on the four upholstered chairs that oh we have God, there gross. for staging. Ew. Isn't that a smart idea? Disgusting. So I'm furious between the smell that dry well, that and but also, then if uh-huh. the carpet if the rug feels wet why doesn't the carpet because i have a carpet thank cleaner. you i have to because of my monster cutter uh-huh. and the carpet when i w- clean it it's still wet it's damp yes. we have we have to wear slippers or whatever because yes. it's still damp for about an hour even with those industrial ones where it has high powered suction, correct. If you've Mine been sucks. shooting water and or solvent, correct. It ain't bone dry. No, it is not. Okay. Yeah. Bone dry smells like piss. Wet Ugh. mat, and then this is what really set me over the edge. They had just had the office fully painted. Okay, uh-huh. professionally painted. It is pearly white. Uh-huh. I see, and I'm talking two to three foot scuff marks along parts of the wall clearly from him dragging the machine or whatever the hell he did and then and i know this because when i was there with my bosses we were all like scrubbing things and cleaning so everything looked perfect i personally took a magic eraser to the door frames of my boss's office and the door the physical door to get off fingerprints just any Mm -hmm. schmutz they looked perfect they were gleaming Okay. Mm -hmm. And I look over and on my boss's door is dirty, dark purple water splattered all over his door. So I'm like, is this a joke? Seriously. That's disgusting. I, I, that has (laughs) never, can you imagine in my home if I had splashed, would he do that in his home? Right. So I was furious and I felt so bad because everything has gone so smooth with the office and like, I brought carloads full of stuff to donation. We donated some amazing things that were still brand new. We had just bought before COVID. They were like, we don't need or want any. They offered things to the employees. Like we got rid of all of our working printers. That was lovely. They're very generous. They're always like, send out an email to the company. They're like, if anybody wants these, you can meet Jessica tomorrow morning and the show, but you know, that's nice. Everything else was donated and the donation place was thrilled. They're like, uh, we really don't have room or I'm like, do you want to just take a look? And then he saw and he goes, Oh, we'll take it. <laughs> I'm Good. like, okay, I thought so. Good. So my point of this is I felt so bad, but I wrote my bosses and I'm like, I hate being negative, but I have to be really brutally honest with you. I don't, think that the guy cleaned <laughs> yeah I at all not, i would not want to pay for that uh so how much did it tra- cost i don't know but my boss was furious and he I said they charged a lot of money for this i said well i wouldn't pay a dollar of it you tell and I, I took I'll pictures there. i'll come over there with my carpet cleaner you can yep. pay me 50 bucks and i'm out <laughs> I took pictures. I said, I'm hesitant. I said, I almost didn't leave it, but I also didn't want to leave it longer so that it may be permanently like, I'm not trying to be dumb, but Dang, I'm like, yeah. I don't know if that scuff's going to come out. If it's, I don't know what caused it. So I took the magic eraser. I got most of it off. Mm-hmm. But the point is, I'm like, now why am I having to go back and clean up after you, a professional service? Anytime I'm in and out of a client's home, you better believe that I literally would sometimes like take my fingers picking up any crumb I saw on the ground to make sure that I did not leave one speck behind, not one speck. So it was disgusting. I'm just saying really also take a look uh, walk through with someone when you can Mm -hmm. and be like, "Uh -uh, what's this? Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry. And that, and that, so I just took a bunch of pictures, sent it to my boss, and I'm like, yeah, I know you're the one that's going to have to deal with this company, but you can forward these pictures directly on. You can even, I'll send you the timestamp on them if they need it wow. to show, because you shouldn't be paying $1 for this. No. This is a joke. No, because then they had to pay you to come back in and clean up after them. Yes. It was a total, <laughs> total waste of my time. And it ended up taking up most of the day. I'm sure. Well, we were supposed to record that day and I was like, don't stress. I'm available. Yeah, that's unacceptable. And also I think it's to me now, this is maybe extreme, but to me, it's like stealing because you charged for a service that you didn't give. That's stealing. Yep. 
in my I agree. Opinion. Yes, I totally agree. Ugh. All right. Well, unacceptable. It is unacceptable, and it's disgusting, and it wasted my time. Okay. Yeah, and because the we companies. were going to record that day, and you were stressing out. Yes. And I was like, I have nothing. Don't stress. <laughs> <laughs> But it does. It messes with your day. Yes. And then the trickle down, like, of course, I had nothing. But what if I did? Yep. Because you're going out of town. We have a schedule we're trying to keep, you know? Indeed. Mm. All right. Well, should we move on to our? No. Oh, yeah. We need. Here's the thing. I think we should. Cleansing breath. Yeah. But I think we should do my corner before the cleansing breath. Don't you think? Oh, okay. Because I think it's going to make us go. <clears throat> my corner. All right. Don't you think? Sure. Do you think I'm wrong? Go for it. Okay. I think we're going to need a, a cleansing breath after this. <laughs> All right. So here's my corner. Uh, it's called How Rude. And I just want to say that we're having a real problem in the United States, at least, because I've been around, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, <laughs> with rudeness. It's a real problem. This is from the New York Times, y'all. Written by Neil Vigdor. Restaurant shuts down for a day of kindness after customers make its staff cry. No. Okay. The owners of Apartment Cape Cod or Apt Cape Cod? I know. I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> I'm not sure. The owners of, we don't know if it's Apartment Cape Cod or Apt Cape Cod. <laughs> A farm-to-table restaurant in Brewster, Massachusetts, drew a line in the sand against customers' rude behavior since being allowed to fully reopen. Oh, boy. Here we go. This <laughs> is from July 14th. Like, this is mm -hmm. this just happened. Yep. The verbal abuse from rude customers got so bad, the owners of one farm-to-table restaurant on Cape Cod said that some of their employees cried. The final indignity wow. came last Thursday when a man berated one of the restaurant's young employees for telling him that they could not take his breakfast takeout order because the restaurant had not opened yet. I'm sorry. Since the pandemic, have we just decided that hours of operation don't apply? Right. Come on. Ugh. Uh, Brandy Felt Castellano, the co-owner of Apt Cape Cod and Brewster, said, I never thought it would become this, she said. So Miss Felt Castellano and her spouse, Regina Felt Castellano, who is also the head chef. So Miss Felt Castellano and her spouse, Regina Felt Castellano, who is also head chef and co-owner, announced on Facebook that the restaurant would close for part of that same day to treat the restaurant's employees <sighs> to a day of kindness. Good on them. I, yep. I've been in the service industry and 99.9% .9 of the time. Your managers do not support you. I love them for this. Mm -hmm. The move drew widespread attention in the community and on social media. Other restauranteurs shared similar anecdotes that they said demonstrated the strain that fully reopening was placing on an industry that was battered by the coronavirus pandemic. Many of us didn't survive the pandemic, Brandy Felt Castellano said of restaurants in an interview on Tuesday. For people to be this aggressive towards the ones that have is disheartening. I can only imagine. This was not always the case. Earlier in the pandemic, customers overwhelmingly exhibited kindness, Ms. Felt Castellano said. The restaurant's motto, which is posted on its website, is come as strangers, leave as friends. But since restaurants in the state were allowed to fully reopen on May 29th, the treatment of COD24's employees, many of whom are young, who include the couple's two children, have gotten worse. Quote, it's like abuse, she said. It's things that people are saying that wouldn't be allowed to be on TV because they would be bleeped. People are always rude to restaurant workers, but this far exceeds anything I've ever seen in my 20 years. Ms. Felt Castellano, 39, said that some customers had assumed that it would be business as usual, but had not grasped that the restaurants were still grappling with staffing and supply shortages. That can mean that wait times are longer and that some items on the menu are not available, which she said has been a source of some of the verbal abuse. Um, when a group of diners didn't get the table that they had requested, she said they threatened to sue. Okay. I'm sorry. What? I know where you got that because we all know who sues everyone, even uh -huh. when they shouldn't. Uh -huh. It's wrong. It's wrong. 
It's bad behavior. I cannot. Uh, the owner said, I would say that this is its own epidemic. The restaurant's Facebook post resonated with so many people online who condemned the boorish behavior. Having just come out of the last 15 months, you would think that people would be grateful to just be able to enjoy a meal out, wrote one Facebook commenter who identified himself as David Deegan and who originally comes from Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. It is so sad that much of society has gone back to being unkind and entitled. How many times? I think every week the last few months, Jessica, I say, why are people being so rude? Mm -hmm. Right? Tyler yep. Hatfield, co-owner of The Rail, a restaurant in Orleans, Massachusetts, the next town from Brewster, said in an interview on Tuesday that he had experienced similar issues at the restaurant that he and his brother, Cam Hatfield, opened this spring. Last week, he said a group of diners took out their frustrations on his employees after having to wait 40 minutes for a table and even longer because of a computer problem. They asked for the food to be boxed up after it had been brought to the table, and then they dumped the contents of the entire to-go bag in front of the restaurant when they left. That's just about the worst behavior I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I, he's not wrong. That is childish, boorish, rude, entitled, and mean. Yep. yep. It's just mean. As restaurants adapt to the changing contours of the pandemic, Mr. Hadfield, 27, said he wishes that customers would show more patience for the people cooking their meals and serving them. Giving us a little grace to come from zero to 60 just would be nice. Come on, that's so true. Yes. Next door to Massachusetts in Rhode Island, the head of the state's hospitality association said in an interview on Tuesday that several restaurant owners had recently complained to her about customers mistreating their employees. One of them said she had expressed concerns that his workers might walk off the job, and people are. That's mm -hmm. the thing. She also recalled an episode last summer when an ice cream shop in the state closed one of its locations for the rest of the season because of rude customers. Oh, my God. Quote, I think we just need to remind people that we're all doing the best we can with the resources that are available to us right mm -hmm. now, said Dale J. Venturini, the president and chief executive of the Rhode Island Hospitality Association. I think it's a pent up demand. People do not have the same patience that they may have had in the past, and I'm hoping that's going to change. Ms. Ms. Virgerini said that the association, which represents 900 restaurants and hotels, had recently started a Please Be Kind campaign to help businesses and their employees. If we're having to start Be Kind campaigns because you're so rude, you need to stay home and cook for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't you put your yuck on other people. Don't you harsh other people's lives because you're mad. Exactly. Ooh, it makes me work. so angry. After more than a year of eating and drinking at home, some restaurant patrons had changed their expectations. In one example, she said that one had complained to his bartender that there was no alcohol in his drink. Well, I'm sorry if restaurant pours aren't as heavy as your, <laughs> your closed up in your home pour, okay. but that ain't the way the world works, buddy. <laughs> we later learned he was making himself a triple at home. Okay, well, that's why you don't taste the alcohol, sir. Uh -huh. But there are other times when that turns nasty. They see an empty table and they don't understand why they can't sit down there. Well, because there's nobody to wait on you. And uh -huh. you'll get mad if you sit there and nobody comes over. Exactly. Ms. Castellano said that many of her customers and other businesses expressed solidarity with her restaurant and its employees after announcing that it would close for part of Thursday. One regular customer dropped off a gift card for the restaurant's employees to use at a local ice cream shop, while a parasail oh. and jet ski shop in the next town offered a day of fun on them. Now that's goodness. Yes. A lot of people, said Ms. Castellano, have been like, thanks for saying what we've all been wanting to say. Mm -hmm. I support that 100. I've been, we've both been in the service industry. Yep. Don't you dare be rude to those little kids that are just trying to make a little money to pay their bills and go to school or help out their parents. They don't own that business. And even if they did, you have no business being mean to them when they're trying to serve you. To anyone, to any kind of business that is essential, the restaurant industry, the hospitality industry, the grocery industry, and the essential retail businesses that are open. People have, those are the people that if they were able, and if their place even still existed because they were lucky enough to have what, part of a sidewalk to serve people outside, most of the places didn't and mm -hmm. couldn't. 
I'm so angry about all of this. I deal with it personally within my family with people that are essential workers. Mm -hmm. I resent it mm -hmm. so wholeheartedly. It's like those people have had to go to work and mask up and have a smile on their face and mm -hmm. be treated like shit on a well, daily they're basis out there by scared people. scared for themselves and their family. Correct. But they have to because they have to survive. Correct. And you're going to go be mean to them? What is it's wrong insane. with you? And complaining about that after we people being closed and by the luck of the draw skin being Skin of their teeth. Skin of their teeth they made it by. <laughs> I Do don't... you remember? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Earlier on uh, last year in COVID, we had uh, more than one, but the first place that comes to mind, Hugo's Tacos, an amazing mm -hmm. small little local franchise of two, excuse me, three locations in LA. They forever. closed for a while because mm -hmm. people were people being were mean. so unruly and just downright rude and mean to their employees. And they're well, like, nope, we will not tolerate this. Good. I'm so glad that these people are protecting their employees. Yes. Like, this couple, it's like they have young kids working for them not kids yep. they're legal working age yeah. obviously but they're young and they don't deserve yes. this no. they're just there to make some money they don't own that business they're not in charge of supplies they're not in charge of hiring you shut the f up and let them do their job they probably right. don't want to be there they'd rather be out having fun just like the rest of us but even to the people that are older and do own the business and do the make the decisions you think they want to hear that you're pissed that they no longer have blueberry cheesecake now they only have plain cheesecake that kind of bullshit things that people get upset about then i, I guess you can go and make your own I'll or find somewhere phone. else that has it because exactly. <laughs> They're doing the best they can. Exactly. I don't, uh, this pandemic has, I think, erased all patience, but then there's also entitlement mixed in there. Ugh. There is anger. People yep. are so angry. I don't yep. know. Like, I've even felt it in myself when I'm driving mm -hmm. because our traffic is now like back to LA traffic uh -huh. and it's awful. And I've had to check myself because yep. my patience in traffic is not on a, in a normal time great. <laughs> and right now I know that my patience is less. You have to stop it. I don't know. I do think I know why our country's so angry right now. And I won't say it because we're not a political podcast, but this <laughs> behavior is unacceptable. It yep. is not adult. It is not kind. It is not acceptable. It has exactly. to stop. And if you keep going out into the world and you keep yelling at people or getting mad at people, you need to check yourself and stay home for a minute till you fix it. Yes. Because it's not, don't you put your, you know, S-H-I-T. I don't know why I'm trying. I'm trying to be more careful because my friend Kate's dad thinks I have a potty mouth. But um, <laughs> shit rolls downhill, man. Don't put you, your stink on everyone else. That's right. Because they don't want, they've got enough of their own. They yeah. don't need your trouble and they don't need you to make things worse when they're just trying to make a living. No. We're all, no, I, I know people hate and are sick of we're all doing the best we can. I used to hate that term too, because I'm like, but I always want to do better. But right now, for real, mm -hmm. we're all doing the best we can. Yep. <laughs> give yourself a break and give everyone else around you a break. Have some yep. patience and find your kindness. And some respect. Yes. I don't know where your kindness has gone, but find it. Because yep. if not, we're going to be like cockroaches, just consuming for ourselves and destroying mm -hmm. cockroaches don't destroy anything, but literally like out for ourselves, it, it's destructive. Yep. It's, we already, especially in the United States, I can't speak for other countries, but we already have such a mental health crisis here. The last thing we need is you going around making people feel like shit. That's true. See why I said I, I wanted to wait for a cleansing breath? I need it. I know. Me too. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Don't be mean to people. We like to take a cleansing breath. We get out our frustrations. Are they the biggest problems in the world? No, but we're just trying to have some normalcy. Mm -hmm. We vent it out. We take a cleansing breath, and then we're going to fill up with some goodness and some funnies. Indeed. So if you can scream it out, I welcome you to do that. <laughs> if you can't, at the very least, just take a breath with us. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. And uh, <sighs> Please be kind to people. Please be kind. Kindness is important. Yes. <laughs> ah. 
Well, I do have some good news for you, Dana. My Maybe. corner is going to make you laugh, not Yay! get upset. Yay! This is beyond. So this is a golden oldies meets excuse me corner. I, w- I don't know what, what cartoon that is, but I want to watch it. <laughs> I love when there's a mashup of two things and it just seems like they go together and love you can't it. decide what corner it is. This is from Metro, yeah? Another one of my favorite UK publications with my poor Australian-ish accent, as I Listen, say that. Nobody mm-hmm. expects good accents from us. We're not Gareth Reynolds <laughs> from the <Bugala. laughs> <laughs> Socially distanced, of course. If you don't follow our friend Gareth, he's one of the co-hosts Please. of the dollop. But his Instagram, he's work, he's constantly working on new material. And, he's and it's so hilarious. Funny. He did a whole stand-up bit about his aunt that is just going out doing whatever she wants during COVID, but always ends it with socially distanced, of course. <laughs> but it's so perfect because how many people did you hear that from in other parts of the country? All the time. Throughout? And I caught the myself way, saying it. <laughs> We're not trying to wag a finger. We just were in no. a complete lockdown out here for pretty much a year. Yeah. So people were like, I barely saw anyone. There was only 20 people at that party. I'm like, I've seen no one. I don't think I've seen. Well, that's not true. I had to travel for my moms and stuff. But, but like time, for, for reals, Dan Tipton, I don't think he's seen more than 20 people no, outside of work in, no. in over two, almost two years. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Couple find out absolutely gorgeous pate they were eating was cat food wait (laughs) this article is brought to us by harrison jones a mom howled with laughter after her elderly parents asked her to buy them more quote gorgeous pate only to discover they had eaten a tin of cat food Oh, my God. That would so easily be me if I liked pate. (laughs) (laughs) Angela Holloway has been shopping for her mom, Margaret Lincoln, and stepdad, Donald Lincoln, throughout the coronavirus crisis, but usually separates the pet food from the rest of the shopping. That meant the 59-year-old was confused last week when her mom told her they had eaten a really lovely dinner of absolutely gorgeous pate and baked bread. The Sheffield couple who now live in France were eating with Angela's sister, Beverly, but no one had noticed the cat on the packaging and they struggle to read French labeling. Oh my God. <laughs> Upholsterer Angela said that when the 80 year old Margaret showed her the tin, which they had finished off completely, she burst into laughter. The family moved to France in 2015 and admit reading the French labels can prove tricky, though Angela thought the feline picture on the tin was enough of a giveaway. It's a pretty big sign. (laughs) (laughs) She said, honestly, I nearly wet myself. I was howling with laughter. My mom started laughing. Then my sister started laughing. Um, None of the trio became ill from eating the tuna-based food. Oh, my <gasps> God. <laughs> Which was meant for their pet cat, Aggie. Aww. Though Margaret and Beverly saw the funny side, 95-year-old Donald was less amused. <laughs> she said his face was aghast. He jokingly said, what are you doing? Trying to poison me? <laughs> My mom had absolute astonishment on her face. And because I was laughing, she just had to laugh as well. It's like, oh, my God, mom, what have you done? Oh, my God. She said she really enjoyed it. She said it was lovely. (laughs) (laughs) Angela said that she could no longer buy meat and cheese products from the UK, including her parents' favorite, Shippam's Paste, and is on the hunt for good alternative. Oh my that god. Makes me laugh so hard because also the picture of them they're so adorable. They're so they're happy. <laughs> so cute. So let me tell you something right now. This is I do I don't care if I'm offending anyone with this cuz I'm sure several of our listeners do this. I have a huge problem with people putting cat food on a counter. That oh. is for humans. I'm an animal lover. 
I don't open need your and ready to eat. Yes. Yeah. 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 No. No. That's I don't need your cat as cute as it is prancing its feet through its, its litter, litter box uh -huh. and then prancing its feet across your marble countertop to eat its food where you've been prepping dinner no and okay? also i'm sorry but my majestic ollie and C cutter uh <laughs> and lucy they need their own space and dining area don't force them to eat on your uh, counter huh? so where i did this I didn't realize until now I do after years of knowing this, that these people are putting their cat's food up high mm -hmm. on their kitchen countertops. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And in fact, when I did this, I didn't even know that there was a cat in the house and there was a bowl. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, these are cute little, not Chex mix, but some kind of little delights, like a no. mixed bag. No. Oh, I went all in and took a couple of handfuls. I'm like, this is weird, but good. Do I like no. this? I'm that glutton that has to keep going back for more to make sure if I like something or not. <laughs> and then you should have seen the person's face when they finally came out. They were like getting ready and their and their eyes bugged out. And I was like, what were those pretzel things? They're really good. And they're like, what pretzel things? I'm like, oh, the bowl of stuff that you had out that i've been eating <laughs> no by the way they didn't offer it to me i was just there i'm like oh they put out like a little bowl of snacks like <laughs> beer nuts or something and they were like jessica that is cat food <laughs> <laughs> well you know i went nuts and i'm like then why is it why on your counter? counter yes yes <laughs> i mean come on so I have to tell you, I I too would do this with this couple did like it's not shocking. It's well, and I'll be honest, there's some of like Lucy's food, specifically dog food, mm -hmm. that it's like um roast pot roast dinner, right? Yes. I'm sorry, but it smells so delicious. And there's <laughs> chunks of carrots and potatoes yes. and meat in it. And I'm like, I gotta some... be honest, I don't think this tastes bad if like if I were desperate, I let's. If someone threw on. that on a couple of boiled potatoes, you'd be Thank all you. in. I, and also, I said if things were bad, I might resort. To, I, honestly, I might try it anyway. Yes. If I, yeah. <laughs> it smells so good. Well, I just my sister just sent me a TikTok yesterday of a dude that was like, "I have been using this," and he held up a spray can, <laughs> and he said, "It is sunscreen, and I have been using it for days as cooking spray." <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Ah, uh, the word. <laughs> uh, oh, that, that oh, poor, those that little, poor cuties. little cuties. But she said it was lovely, so I guess not poor. More multiple times. Lovely multiple. and gorgeous. What's a gorgeous pate? It's a lump of meat. Uh oh, it's not meat, sister. Oh, it's not? No. It looks no, like no, meat. No, no. no. It Pate like is usually meat. made of liver. Yeah, that's a meat. Yes, an organ meat. I mean, yes. Yeah, right. yuck, 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 yuck. I love it, and I even love vegan pate made of <laughs> walnuts, raisins, and Ew. sometimes lentils. Oh God, it's Ew. delicious! Oh, it's I delicious. Just, you know what? We need to move on to our raves because I, I can't. <laughs> <talk to> <laughs> <laughs> oh god the please be kind campaign good for you jessica you eat what you find to be delicious even if no one else does <laughs> i'm just kidding i know a lot of people like <laughs> gross uh <laughs> let's move into our raves yeah let's do it so my rave this week is how do we pronounce this ethique i think ethique.com um let me just read you a little bit about them. Gone are the days of wasteful plastic hair care and skincare bottles. Yes. Ethique packs the essential ingredients into a concentrated bar that's equivalent to three bottles of liquid shampoo. Then donates 20% of profits to conservation, animal welfare, uh, environmental groups, and adopts animals to pay for their care. Mm. Mm, 
It has worked with over 170 organizations worldwide and has ongoing partnerships with Rainforest Trust and HUHA, among others. Revolutionizing the cosmetic industry is a mission that extends well beyond plastic waste. Deforestation, habitat loss, and waterway pollution are just some of the environmental concerns driven by the manufacture of beauty products. Unacceptable. Mm -hmm. unacceptable animal testing all of it can't handle it many of these items are still barbaric here we go barbarically tested on animals Uh using ingredients made from animals and threaten the existence of endangered wildlife i am never going to be capable enough of getting pretty enough that would make that okay with Mm -hmm. my heart (laughs) that's (laughs) unacceptable um We work alongside charities working to right these wrongs, donating 2% of sales to conservation, animal welfare, and environmental groups undertaking incredible work. We also hold direct trade relationships with suppliers around the globe to ensure that we pay a fair price for great ingredients produced in safe working conditions. I love it. That I think people, it's such a common thing. They, you run to Target, you grab your lip gloss and your base and whatever you got, unless you're fancy and you can afford expensive stuff. That's not me. But um, but you, I think we don't think about – it's never – unless you're one of these environmentalists or an animal lover that seeks mm-hmm. out documentaries about, or about this kind of thing, I don't think it was in the public consciousness for far too long. Right. Um, but anyway, ethique.com, their products are 100% plastic-free – Carbon neutral, one tree planted for every online order. All of the orders are shipped plastic free shipping and they donate 2% of sales to charity. I mean, they have really amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, sh- that shampoo bar, I'm actually curious about because yep. a lot of people are doing shampoo bars now because they mm-hmm. last longer. Yep. So, I- I'm actually really curious about that. Anyway, check them out if you can. They're not, they're not that expensive, to be no. honest. They're not that much different than than pricing you would find at like Target or somewhere. I'm looking at thirteen dollars, seventeen dollars, like not not bad. I mean, it's not your three dollar NYX or Elf thing, but sometimes it's nice to feel good. Real quick exactly. before I bust before I bust out of here and we move on to your rave, I just mm-hmm. want to get some some facts for you here. Eleven million plus plastic bottles prevented from manufacture <laughs> since the beginning of 2012. That's amazing. 2.5 million plus gallons of water saved since the beginning of 2012. 246,705 real trees have been planted since April 22nd, 2020. Love it. Awesome. That's huge. Um, I don't know what this means, but it sounds great. 1471.720T of CO2 has been offset (laughs) since April 22nd, 2020. So anyway, these guys have been mentioned in Business Insider, uh, Huffington Post, Forbes, National Geographic. They're amazing. Please check them out, ethique.com. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Jessica, for bringing this to my attention. Indeed. Okay, the next rave we have today is called the Bra Recyclers. This is really exciting. It is exciting, and there are multiple um, incarnations of this, uh, uh, of different names, but there's places around the country. I found a lot of places that do similar things. So, again, I put that out there for people maybe hosting a drive locally in their area or teaming up to do a drive, and then companies like this can disperse them. Yeah. So this website is www.brarecycling.com. The Bra Recyclers is a social enterprise founded by Elaine Burks Mitchell and Johnny Mitchell. In 2008, we are a clothing recycling company specializing in the reuse of new and pre-loved bras. Our goal is to educate and influence retailers and consumers on the social and environmental benefits of participating in the circular economy by extending the life of pre-loved bras rather than discarding them into landfills. The social impact of the reuse of bras has allowed us to donate millions of bras to women and girls around the world in need and or who are escaping domestic violence and human trafficking. Amazing. For those two reasons alone, 
please, I beg you. I always Check am begging people to donate yeah. their clothes, but yes. Oh boy. We provide a simple and scalable process for retailers and consumers to extend the life cycle of pre-loved and new bras, potentially reducing the water, carbon, and waste footprint. One, in partnership with bra recycling ambassadors around the world, the social impact of these actions has resulted in the donation of over 4 million bras to over 100 nonprofits supporting women and girls Again, escaping domestic violence, human trafficking, or who just need a bra to go to school or play sports. Oh, the things we take for granted, right? right? Yes. So uh, they're kind of like have this acronym called Bravo Beliefs. We believe that the more you give, the more you receive. Our success is not just driven by revenue, but by the impact we make on the environment and in the lives of families in our communities. Uh, recycling, we advance environmental stewardship by incorporating recycling on purpose in our business and personal lives. Advocacy, we are advocates to increase awareness of the social impact bra recycling can have on women and girls around the world in transition. Voice, we believe that everyone has a voice that deserves to be heard. We want to share the stories and experiences of those who are facing foreseen and unforeseen challenges in their lives. Opportunity. We want to create opportunities for individuals and companies to reshape the lives of women and girls by recycling bras and not throwing them away. The simple act can have a lasting impact on the lives of women and girls around the world and our environment. What we accept. All categories of bras, sports, and regular new or pre-loved slash gently used and worn bras, post-surgery breast cancer supplies and accessories, mastectomy bras, prosthesis, camisoles, sleeves, etc. We work with Impact One Breast Cancer Foundation, a Phoenix-based nonprofit organization to provide these items to uninsured women. And three, New underwear only. So the bras they can take, but underwear is used. the one thing that you can't yeah. ever pass. Yeah, no, no, no. But also on the bras, like they say pre-loved, gently used. Don't be sending your bras nasty. that have your underwear, uh, underwear, underwire popping out right. or those elastic threads like shards. But you guys, I guarantee if every person listening right now went through their bras. I probably uh, have five bras right now that just aren't my favorites, but they're yes. they're in good condition that I could donate. Yes, I yeah. have plenty that are much smaller that are in great condition, but I'm probably never going to be able to wear those again. Well, and I need to get rid of some of mine because I have a small house yes. and no closet yes. space. Same. So my bras, I'm sorry, y'all, this is rude, but I got some big old tatas. <laughs> They take up a lot of room. Same. My bras are like two domes. Yes. <laughs> uh, these lady double D's, they they need a lot of coverage. And, and I just don't have room in my house for that. And I'm sure I'm not the Same. only one, you know? Same. Anyways, please think about that stuff. I was making Love Alan it. do it again the other day. I'm like, it's that time. To Meeting. donate his bras. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious no he usually he always likes to mess with me if he comes in when i've been doing laundry and the other day he pretended like he was sleeping and he had my bra just sitting on top of his t-shirt but again two domes that stand up on their own were you like can you see your feet because i never have <laughs> <laughs> No, I oh love it. Oh my this. god. I love it. No, to purge. I'm like we're doing another purge. Yeah. I Trash, donate, put away properly. Those are the three categories. We also just did that with toys too. We just went yes. through toys and did a big round of that's gather huge. up for donation. Yeah. But that's awesome too. And then it's going well, it's to a new my, home. Yes, and it's teaching my son charity yes. as well and that yep. he is so lucky and not everyone has what he has. Yep. So, no, I it's love an it. amazing and valuable lesson to do with children. Absolutely. Absolutely. Your kids are old enough to understand, I promise you. Yes. And it's important because we need to get this anger out of our country. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some caring and some love back in here, okay? 100%. I don't know what other countries are feeling like right now, but I'll tell you, the U.S. is yuck. 
<laughs> Yuck attitude. Yes. Uh, I love it. Let's say their name one more time. It's bear. It's bra recycling.com. Yes. Okay. I love it. Thank you, Jessica. <clears throat> Thank you. Jessica. Dana. I think that's our show. I think it is. <sighs> I'll tell people how to get a hold of us since I did not do that at the top of the show. Great. Hindsight is always 2020. Or 2021. <laughs> <laughs> unacceptable <laughs> please find us at the rants and raves podcast on both instagram and facebook on twitter at raves underscore the you can email us directly at the rants and raves podcast at gmail.com or hit the contact button on our website www.therantsandravespodcast.com thank you yay i was saying patronage. yay but i had myself muted and nobody could hear me <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to end the show with a weekly point to ponder. We also like to share things that we're watching or doing. Uh, do you care if I go first real quick? Because I'm excited. About something. So I've been watching and catching up on there's like eight or nine seasons, I think, of this life with Lisa Ling. Oh, I've only seen a few of them. And man, is that a good show? I freaking love her so much. And I now that always, you're saying that, I'd like to have. look up the rest. Nat Geo. It's on HBO right now, but I think oh, it, it was on, but I think it was okay. on, it's on HBO Max, like to stream mm -hmm. all of mm -hmm. the seasons, but I think you can find it on Nat Geo or something too. But she is so classy and so smart and such yep. an activist. And so I just love her to death. And Me um, too. that show is absolutely fascinating. There was one episode I watched about genetics. There were 200 babies born from this program that was designed to make them geniuses. And she finds some of them and what they're up to and what they knew about their past. It's just fascinating. Ooh. Fascinating. The very first episode of season one, Sugar Babies and Sugar Daddies. You know I was into it. Wanted to know. Wanted to see. Yuck. <laughs> yes. Anyway, this life with Lisa Ling, I think it's been on for like a decade, but mm -hmm. I just started at the beginning and I'm going through and it's really fascinating. It's just slice of life things that mm -hmm. you don't know about. I didn't, or at least I didn't. I mm -hmm. did not know that Utah, the Mormon community has a massive problem with prescription prescription drugs because oh, they don't consider it either. drugs because it's given by a doctor uh, had no clue and it's destroying lives wow yeah so anyway this life with lisa ling do you have anything you want to share well i mean <laughs> shark week but right <laughs> it's gonna but you know what i bet now not i mean there's a million streaming networks obviously we can't all have everything and if you do, good for you good because for I'm you. jealous, admittedly. I know, me too. Um, Discovery, mm -hmm. um, the Discovery Plus or whatever it's called now, but now Discovery has a whole umbrella of stuff under them the way Disney does. So right. I imagine if you have the Discovery app, but you know what? Maybe even through regular. Why am I trying to sell people on Shark Week? I'm, I'm not, like, maybe if you go on demand and look up Discovery, you can find Shark Week. No, but also a lot of times, I know this is probably not great, especially considering we're in the industry, but a lot of times with shows like that, if you type it into YouTube, there's somebody who's like pirated it and put kind yeah. of a bad version and it yeah. gets pulled down immediately, but you might catch it. <laughs> Hilarious. But yes, I am all in on Shark Week. All Love in. It. All right. Yep. Well, I actually brought, believe it or not, a point to ponder that I think is actually serious and real. I'm being genuine. Mm. <laughs> it's not like, did you know moles breathe through their buttholes? <laughs> um, that is not a fact. I made that up right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure everybody <sighs> was oh probably aware of that. God. But anyway, I just saw this. Um, you know, I like to follow a lot of positivity. I have my little affirmation app, blah, 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 yes. blah, blah. Uh, just to try and keep my spirits up sometimes when I have a hard time. And this is Morgan Harper Nichols uh, on Instagram. I know nothing about her or anything, but I think little Kate followed her and sent me some sayings. She just hmm. does calligraphy and sayings and things like that and posts mm -hmm. them. Um, this one really resonated with me, and I think it will for a lot of people. Finding joy in the waiting does not mean that you're giving up. It's just saying this right here is enough as I wait for what's to come. And I've been saying to you, Jessica, I want to enjoy my journey. Yes. Life is about the journey. It's not, 
I don't want to hop from accomplishment to accomplishment and Correct. never feel satisfied. I want Correct. to be content in my journey. Mm-hmm. I want to spread happiness. I want to spread kindness. I want to be a caring and happy, loving person. I love that. I think we all do in our I heart. do too. Yes. So anyway, it's so hard. And I'm, I'm using this because specifically for what Jessica and I do in the entertainment industry, there's a lot of waiting. Even when you have a job, there's a lot of waiting. Yes. <laughs> Even on set, there's a lot of waiting. Yep. But all of that waiting for the next job, for the next audition, for the next opportunity, just mm-hmm. making it specific to what we do. And I hope that you can relate this or transfer this to whatever you're dreaming of or doing or trying to right. accomplish. Find the joy in the waiting because that's not giving up. You're just, it's enough until you get to I agree. Fun. So just think about that a little bit, like for real, actually, this time, most of the time, I don't really want you to think about toilets and things like that. But, <laughs> but this one, I want you, I want it to be a little hard piece of candy you suck on for the week. Is that weird? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we love Thank you, you Grandma guys. Dana. You're welcome. I'm always here for you guys. Anytime you need something, I always got some words because I never shut up. <laughs> um, Jessica, I love you. I love you too. I love all our listeners. Shout out to uh, our friend. Are we allowed to say names? Our friend Linus gave us sure. a really sweet uh, yes. message this week and he always does and we appreciate it. Shout Indeed. out to Beck Martin, who's starting her Blooming with Beck. Uh, life yes. coaching business. Uh, who else can we shout out? Always shouting out Jen Hall Hill because she's just amazing oh, and man. talented. Yes. We just love you all. Um, thank you so much for everything you do for us. And we hope that we're giving you some fun crazy to listen to every once in a while. Indeed. We'll be back next Tuesday. Love you guys. We sure will. Have a good one. Bye, Jess. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>